Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming to participate in uh, Afrikaanvers session number six. And uh, this is uh, the last session in the year. And I really appreciate your participation so far. And today we have two distinguished guests to discuss about the Africa's industrialization from the viewpoint of SMEs and the entrepreneurship. So I'll hand over my microphone to Mr. Kondo, who is the moderator for today, to kickstart the session. And uh, for your information, today's session will be recorded, and uh, it is actually live streamed online. And you can view it after the session online YouTube. I will share the link. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, welcome to our seven, uh, sixth, sixth session of Afrikaanvers. So we've been discussing across, uh, throughout the year on Africa, the industrializations, innovations, civil societies, and many issues were rather focused on the business. And uh, today's uh, discussion, we have a distinguished guest from the uh, very important institution of the government of Japan who helps uh, Japanese companies to extend their business abroad, uh, JETRO. So any countries, we see JETRO office which helps the contacts of the Japanese, uh, creating a contact of the Japanese companies with the local uh, supply chain and network and local institutions. So we have Dr. Katsumi Hirano, uh, Executive Vice President of JETRO tonight. Welcome, Doctor. <laughs> and also, uh, we have we have to sound out how the investors are watching this movement of uh, innovative investment business opportunities and Japanese companies' uh, access to that. We, have, uh, we are very honored to have CEO of Shibusawa and Company uh, Incorporated uh, Mr. Ken Shibusawa, thank you very much for coming. So, uh, our discussion focused on, focusing on this, uh, the business exchange between Japan and African continent, especially in the uh, investment that now we are talking a lot about responsibilities of the investors if the business really creates a good social impact with the business, throughout the business to the communities and customers, then make a good profit. So this uh, participation of business, now that, uh, it is uh, extending to also the Japanese regions, not only Tokyo, but in the regions, there are many uh, small and uh, medium business uh, companies. They are now talking a lot about going abroad to, uh, to make an innovative business and the providing, pr to provide a social impact. So, Dr. Hirano, please uh, tell us about how do you see the pros prospects and challenges of the Japanese companies uh, doing business in Africa in coming years? Thank you. Very big question. Uh, I understand this African side is a definitely uh, request our further uh, active uh, commitment in the business field. And also our side, the Japanese side, especially in the Japanese SME, has uh, their own requirement to go abroad. Uh, in Japan, we have the more than 4 million number of the SMEs. And, uh, uh, but uh, 
uh, only less than 5% of them have the experience doing the business in abroad outside of Japan. So that figure is uh, much less uh, co compared to the other developed country. And uh, you may know uh, our domestic market is going shrinking. So that their own survival, uh, they must find a new business opportunity and a new market in outside Japan. So the, our general uh, put in a big emphasis uh, to, to persuade the Japanese SME uh, to go around with us to the uh, outside of Japan and uh, put the effort to find a new opportunity, including the African continent. So, uh, for example, uh, we, uh, uh, we are coordinated to the so-called uh, consortium for the promotion export uh, in, uh, in all parts of the Japan. Uh, through such kind of activity, the JETRO have uh, uh, 8,000 number of the uh, Japanese company uh, registered in that consortium. Uh, that number of the company is our target to assist and promote to the uh, 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 overseas connection. And uh, I think there's a majority of the 8,000 is SMEs. And uh, uh, our organization has 46 offices in, uh, in uh, uh, Japan. And uh, we have the, I, I, I proud is uh, Jetro is uh, number one organization, have the business uh, uh, connection and network in the, uh, almost all part of the Japan, including SME. And uh, we are talking about this African connection. Uh, we uh, already directly assisted uh, more than 50 SMEs uh, who have the wish to do in the business in Africa and get in a successful result. And also, uh, we utilize uh, several uh, big events, uh, including the TCAT 6 held in the Nairobi 20, uh, 2016, and also the uh, Japan Africa uh, Public Private Economic Forum, uh, which was uh, held in Johannesburg. Uh, and also the uh, TCAT ministerial meeting is uh, very recently. Uh, we uh, hold this uh, uh, opportunity for the SMEs to present business presentation for the African Highland government officials, including the head of, uh, head of the uh, state. So I, I, I feel uh, personally a uh, big enthusiasm uh, going to the abroad, including Africa. And uh, uh, I think this uh, uh, Japanese SME who have the wish to do something in African countries, uh, around half of them, uh, their business activity directly uh, uh, related to the S SGO. Uh, and they are very social contribution type of the business. And through that sort of the SME uh, uh, connection, uh, uh, we can expect that the Japan and the each African country uh, can build this uh, more grassroots foundation in the private sector. Uh, that is our expectation. So, uh, it is uh, remarkable that uh, the Japanese companies now uh, taking, taking up the opportunities in Africa through the uh, assistance from, Jet, for example, Jetro, in the context of TCAT. And then now the, the uh, Jetro is pushing forward them to make a social impact. Mm -hmm. When the uh, business are on the ground, that business will contribute to the local development and the betterment of the life of the people. Uh, is that uh, correct uh, understanding? Uh, basement of the business activity is uh, getting a profit. Uh, that is the most important thing. But uh, uh, we have the very much variety of the business activity, I including the uh, healthcare or the ecological uh, uh, consideration, and also the educational field. Uh, the sort of the uh, activity, the type of the activity. If they get in the uh, success in the business activity, uh, that sort of the, they should contribute to the African people's uh, uh, welfare. And uh, uh, we, we have the also the expectation with you 
uh, at the next ticket, uh, uh, we uh, might have to the uh, a common platform platform for the business support uh, among this, uh, our organization, JETRO and JICA and the UNDP. Uh, this unified platform, uh, I expected the more uh, strong uh, support for the SMEs activity in African continent. Thank you very much for mentioning to that uh, event and then discussions during the uh, ticket ministerial in October that uh, JETRO was uh, actively engaged in a discussion with the UNDP and the uh, JICA as well uh, to support the uh, young entrepreneurship, especially uh, doing the business with the science and technologies and innovations, uh, new frontier to deal with the uh, local uh, issues and uh, issues of life that is uh, embodied by maybe SDGs, 17 goals, 169 targets. And, but among them, uh, in your view, uh, what are the strengths of the Japanese, especially the SME companies, who are now willing to think about uh, go investing in Africa? I, I think now there are around 700 Japanese companies now uh, conducting business in, in, in the continent, African continent. But most of them are, are retailers, are manufacturers, and then that's a, you know, maybe the quality of services provided by a human uh, capital will be the uh, comparative advantage of Japanese companies from the viewpoint of the, uh, you know, the UN organization. But uh, uh, what do you think the, uh, the, uh, the strengths of Japanese companies uh, once they are on the ground uh, in Africa? Mm, before answering such question, uh, there's no s not so much big market waiting for us because uh, many part of the market share is already absorbed by the other countries uh, enterprise, especially in China. So the uh, very conventional market, usually for prepare for the SMEs, is already uh, occupied by the Chinese activity. So the uh, left off of that, uh, opportunity uh, which can utilize by the Japanese SME is a more rich, more specified part of the uh, human society. So that uh, field uh, may be the uh, very high technology field or the healthcare uh, related sector. Uh, one example, uh, Japanese SMEs have the very advanced uh, technology and the good product uh, for the testers, for including the blood testers or the electrochidograms. Uh, the sort of things is now there's a very energetic uh, activity we can observe. So uh, that kind of the product uh, definitely contributed to the increase of the uh, uh, disease protection and also uh, the welfare uh, standard and uh, uh, including the rural area. Uh, and also uh, Japanese SMEs, I, we expected, can find is a more uh, a part of the uh, private sector which currently uh, uh, neglected by the uh, local company and also the other countries' uh, companies. And uh, one example is a high standard stationery. And uh, now the Japanese SMEs can produce is a very high standard stationery at a relatively low price. And the Japanese company is also high expectation as uh, they will be fine to the uh, market uh, and African continent. Uh, that kind of the uh, trade ship uh, will be helpful to the uh, school, uh, school and African country and also the uh, 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 younger children uh, who have the big wish to run the elementary level. 
I agree that you know the Hello Kitty and the Doraemons, you know, the small goods and stationery uh, in, in Africa are found in the market, and they are very. Some of them are, are produced in uh, somewhere else, out of Japan, without uh, <laughs> uh, without permission. I don't know, but uh, you know, uh, quality of the J Japanese small products like stationery is very very high, and then a very uh, uh, popular. I think I, I fully agree with you. Thank you very much for your market assessment in Africa. So, uh, turning to uh, Mr. Shibusawa, Shibusawa um, so, uh, so you are supporting this Japan Africa Entrepreneur Initiative, and then especially the young people to uh, have uh, uh, aspirations and then uh, hope to create a new generation using the new technologies and the innovation in Africa. Uh, so far, in your own assessment, how are the impact that were created by the, these young, young entrepreneurs that you supported? Okay, uh, thank you, Kondo-san. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, before I get into that discussion, I, I figure everybody knows you and DP. Everybody knows Jetro, but nobody knows Shibusan Company, right? So, uh, so, so a little bit of back, background information is I, I started my company in 2001. Um, prior, I was working in firms like J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and American um, uh, Global Macro Hedge Fund. Um, nothing to do with emerging markets or Africa. Um, 2001, I started my company in, in the area of alternative investments. <coughs> so not the traditional, but alternative. Um, from there, um, in 2008, I started a long-term uh, investment company, mutual fund here in Japan, so I do that. Um, my interest in Africa, <coughs> um, trying to figure out when that started. Um, I, I think t around 2008, I think it's, it was TCAD 4, I think, and that was the first time that I realized there was an a, a international African development uh, conference called TICAD hosted by Japan, the Japanese government. And that, that's been going on for like decades. And, and for me, that was the first time I realized that that was happening here in Japan. So that, that was a wake up call for me. A little bit prior, I, I noticed that once we got, we got into 21st century, that by, I think it was 2050 or 20, 2100, I forgot which, that the most populous countries, the top 10, and I was looking through the list, and I saw Nigeria, Congo, and Ethiopia, and I thought, really, wow. And so, and, and so for me, I'm not a Africa, quote, expert, <coughs> um, but the sort of wake-up call came from around early 2000 to around 2008. Um, TCAD 5 was another uh, important uh, uh, part of me that really uh, got my interest in Africa. Um, at that time, I was the president of an organization, an NGO called the Japan Center for International Exchange, JCIE. Some of you may have heard of this. Um, one of the projects that the JCIE was, uh, was undertaking was the global uh, health area. So it was a secretary to the Global Fund here in Japan. In one of the side events, <coughs> um, we had an event like this, and I, I was the host, and, and we, were, um, we had invited some um, professionals from Africa to have a, a, a panel discussion. And one gentleman was a, a private equity investor based in Kenya. Um, I was an investment business, and so we're, we're having this discussion. <coughs> and up until then, my, my view of Africa was, well, there's lots of natural resources, needs lots of infrastructure, the, 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 the typical story. Um, when I was talking to this gentleman, he said, well, yeah, that's, that's an important area, um, but that, that, that everybody's doing that. <coughs> Everybody's trying to get, go after that, so there's not much value left in that. And rather, it's actually in the SMEs, the small retail <coughs> businesses, um, because Obviously, Africans wants to have a, a quality of life like any other uh, developed nation, and so and so I thought, oh, that's interesting. So I never thought of Africa in that in that uh, in that sort of perspective. Um, around that time, I was uh, well, I had been a uh, a member of the Keizai Doyukai, which is the uh, Association of Corporate uh, Executives. Um, the Keidanden you might have heard about. That's that's the uh, that's the company. <coughs> uh, Doyukai is represented by executives, so uh, we tend to be a little bit more liberal in our in, in our in our in our proposal and whatnot. Uh, and I was interested in Africa, so I joined the Africa Committee. <coughs> um, and 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 so I, and because it was sort of a. It, 
you know, it's, it was a niche. Like, not everybody was you know, getting into Africa, obviously. Um, and so I was, I was interested in learning more about Africa. Um, so I, I ended up being vice chairman and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then about four years ago, three, four years ago, um, I had a dinner <coughs> uh, with the chair and the vice chair of the Keizai Doyukai. Um, and um, one of the guests uh, was uh, Mr. Yoshiyuki uh, Sato. You may have, many of you here probably know of him. He's the uh, founder of Kenyan Nuts, one of the most uh, successful Japanese businessmen in Africa. You know, a wonderful person, right? <coughs> and we were having this glass of wine, we we're having a good time. <coughs> um, and he kind of says, you know, I have all these young people come to me that want to start businesses in Africa and trying to help them out. But I wonder if, you know, um, if, um, if you could start a fund <coughs> to support, support this, uh, the young entrepreneurs, Japanese entrepreneurs trying to start business in Africa. And the host, one of the vice chairs, um, um, he, was, he had lots of wine. So he says, oh, that's great. I, I, I'll put in ichi yen, 100 million yen. And everybody went, Ooh. Really? <laughs> and so we thought, well, that, and I, he was probably just saying that. But, but that kind of got our, our, some of the persons involved in the, in the dinner th thinking about it. And, well, he said, he said, so, 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 <laughs> so we thought, well, let's go revisit it. <clears throat> and then you know, we, we had sort of preliminary discussions, and, and we were thinking, well, an investment fund <clears throat> in the investment business into Africa is probably a little bit, a little bit the hurdle, a lot, there's a lot of hurdles uh, to, to clear, and maybe that might be a little bit too much to start as a side project. <coughs> um, but perhaps we could have a fund where we could, it, it's, it's uh, 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 a um, fund to, not, not as an investment fund, but a support fund for uh, young Japanese individuals trying to start Africa uh, business. And so that, that's how this um, Africa, uh, eto, in Japanese, Nihon Africa, Africa Kigyo Shien Consortium. So, so, you know, African uh, Entrepreneurship Consortium. Um, the way we envisioned it <coughs> is, <coughs> excuse me, is we ask for corporate sponsors to become member of the consortium, and we use the consortium membership fee as as the uh, as the resource to 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 grant um, um, uh, assistance uh, money to Japanese individuals, um, and just as giving assistance and say you know goodbye good luck, <coughs> um, that, that's that wasn't so you know that's it's that wasn't as interesting. So we thought well these guys are all young and they're digital natives, <coughs> they should be adept at the internet. And so what we decided is, is we should have a uh, internet platform where these people, <coughs> young indi individuals and uh, entrepreneurs in Africa can report to us <coughs> their daily lives, their, you know, their difficulties, their successes, their sad stories, their you know, uh, joyful moments um, through the internet. And this is, and this, this is the internet site. <coughs> um, and so let me just run through this real quick. Oops, another window came up. Um, Basically, it's it's a site where the 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 this is just a link from their sort of Instagram um, uh, up. So so if you if you click here, it goes to <coughs> the Instagram um, site, hopefully, and and, and with a, a hashtag with um, Entre Africa, um, there's the 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 people that. Um, the entrepreneurs there can have their sort of, um, you know, uh, Instagram things up here like this. So that's that. Um, another aspect of it is, you go down a bit deeper. And re reports from Africa. So basically, it, this person, Education Matters, <coughs> so Emma, you click on that and it goes to her, should go to her page, goes to her page. And you know, and, and they ha she has her, her her blog posting, and so if you look here, I'm I'm sorry for non-Japanese readers, but the, the, this is the people that we're currently um, I'm supporting right now, <coughs> um, up until uh, the first two years, <coughs> the first two years, um, and and these are the these are the challengers, and, and these are the, the the companies, or I'm sorry, the countries that they are are um, <coughs> currently engaged in. 
Um, and so the we had, this is this year. This is our, and, and our and our sponsors, the important people, <laughs> are, are, are are these. Um, and I think we have some representatives from our sponsors in this audience as uh, well. So thank you very much. Um, and um, so we, we recently had our third year where we uh, the third year of of, of our um, 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 support. And this is a. I'm just running you through what we did. This is our hapyokai that we had, and 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 so th these are all the sponsors. <coughs> and, and and this year we had uh, uh, 16 people apply, and in the past we had 15, 16, and, and this year it was a little bit different. In the past, um, the first two years there were a lot more women, for some reason. I mean, women are first movers for some reason, and, and, and so and there are a lot more women. This year, um, the men came back finally, <laughs> um, and you can see, but they're you know they're relative, relative, relatively young, the digital native millennials, um, and, and these are the are the countries that they are are engaged in. I'm sorry, it's in Japanese, but and another thing is in the first couple of years they tend to be more in e East Africa area, but but this time Ghana, Togo. Um, um, a lot of Ghanas actually this time, four actually. Um, and so a lot more diversity in, in, in area. And of the 16, of the 16 <coughs> we uh, basically, uh, we, we negative screened <coughs> uh, uh, people and so we were left with seven, seven final candidates. And from, from this final candidate, um, for instance, this person, um, he was using uh, Eggsan was using a, a, a smartphone application for uh, for the uh, kiosks <coughs> um, in, in Uganda to have sort of their sort of um, merchandise sort of uh, um, uh, management. Um, this person Murufi uh, San is in South Africa and he started a, a share office space. So he wants to be an incubator for African um, um, uh, entrepreneurs. This person, uh, Ishimoto-san, um, is in Ghana, and he's, he, he makes bread, actually. He's a, he's a bread maker, <coughs> giving um, um, uh, uh, work to actually uh, handicapped, actually, Africans in, in Ghana. Um, and also, uh, Oyama-san, she's in Ghana as well. Um, um, she, everybody knows Shia Bata. And, um, and she has another, I'm sorry, I forgot, I forgot the name of the thing, but uh, uh, another thing that she's working on in, in and this person, Kawano san is in, in, in is in Kenya. He's pretty successful already, and he's uh, he's got a supply chain going. Uh, that's, that's his sort of that's his goal. Um, he currently he started out with onions. He started with onions. He wants to go to other other produces. Um, this person, he's an interesting guy. <coughs> um, he wants to use um, African sort of fabric, and he's from Kyoto, um, and he wants to use Kyoto sort of uh, tastes and whatnot. And he wants to take it to France get some recognition and sell it back into Japan. Very ambitious. And he's a banker, you know, can you believe that? Um, and then this person, he runs a restaurant in Mozambique. <coughs> um, and those, that was the final seven. And it turns out we ended up uh, choosing these three individuals. This person, um, Nakano-san in Togo, <coughs> right? Um, this guy is so cheerful, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, just 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 his energy, bubbling energy, was enough to sort of convince. I think um, his, his business model is is a little bit is a little bit uh, far fetched, a little bit, but but he's so energetic and and, and cheerful that um, we thought we have to help help out this guy. The bread maker. Um, this guy actually, he was he, he was he's really good. I mean, he's very very. Uh, um, he 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 posts on these two guys. They post a lot uh, on the blog, and, and so so he's he, and that's very important for us um, that you know we get feedback from our for our entrepreneurs in Africa. Um, and he is like I said, I, I believe it was the uh, ha mentally handicapped <coughs> uh, people um, in, in Ghana that he was trying to help out. Um, provi providing them jobs, and so um, he's obviously that that that'll give him a lot of the challenges. Um, but um, but he's, he's he's on his way. Um, and this person, um, oh yeah, moringa, which moringa, which is a, a superfood, I guess that she, she wants to sort of <coughs> um, more have more recognition um, here here in Japan. So 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 these are so these are the three. Uh, um, 
uh, uh, additional people that we're supporting. And, and the way it works is we support them for a maximum of three years. Um, and, and we ask our sponsors to be minimum of three years <laughs> so, that, so, the, so the funding matches. Um, and, um, and not just that, like I said, <clears throat> it's just not that we just, uh, you just give them the money and say, you know, ha you know, good luck, but every time they come back to Japan, we'll have, you know, um, meetings like this, mostly for our consortium, uh, uh members, obviously, but, but every once in a while, open forums like this, we've had this in the past. Um, and so and these are the list. And as you can see, it's not, it's not big infrastructure project. It's not real high IT kind of stuff. Um, a lot of it's the informal sector, <coughs> um, but but the uh, the common gr common ground that these guys have, all of them have, they they really love Africa. I mean, they, 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 I mean, so they're they're committed to do something in Africa, and that's that's why they're there, and and we think that's great, and that's why we're supporting them. So, it's a brief. Sorry, I took a little bit much time, but that's what we're doing. Thank you very much. Um, Shifasa san, so you really uh, met these people and then you found good and then you really uh, provided the, uh, the fund and then you, uh, you watch also the, uh, uh, the success of their business. Yes. Yes. And then uh, how, how, what, what's your, say, criteria, criteria. To, uh, to, to choose the people? The criteria is actually, it's not the most... Mm, refined in entrepreneurs in a sense with with successful business models for, for us it's, it's for 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 because because the amount of money that we're talking about actually it's uh, it's uh, it's it's it though it though what is it in english 1.5 1, 1. million yen a year for three years so it's you know it, it's it's not <coughs> it's not gonna you know make you rich <laughs> um and, but it's enough to support your basic you know, a life in Africa, um, or possibly to grow your business to the next step. And for us, for us to get involved, um, it, it, it doesn't depend on the level, but it, the, the entrepreneurs that we're hoping, if we get involved with them at this level, we'll have the most leverage for them to go to the next level. So, so for instance, Oyama-san is very high. He's, he's, he's got a brand going. But for us to get involved, maybe the, 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 the she can expand your business, moving to the next stage. On the other hand, Nakasan, his business is just starting. <clears throat> we have another gentleman that we're supporting in Ethiopia, and he's trying to buy land, and he's having a hard time buying land in, in Eth Ethiopia. Um, but hopefully, for us to get involved, he'll, he can go to the next step. And so, so, so that's basically the criteria. And, and, and many of them, actually, you know, they're not, like I say, large-scale um, job creation. But providing job creation for Ishimoto-san, um, you know, and also the uh, the Nakamoto-san, who's um, <coughs> who's who's our actually who's, who's our most successful role model is actually this person. She's in Uganda. <coughs> And, and what she does is she she provides uh, jobs to single mothers in Uganda, <coughs> um, and of course she, she herself she's also an ex-banker actually, um, but um, she saw that um, many of these single mothers to provide um, food for their children has to you know do me, you know really nasty jobs and sometimes they have to you know you know do. Um, sexual sort of work and that kind of stuff. So, so um, she wanted to provide jobs <coughs> for, for, for the you know for the for the for these uh, underprivileged people. Um, and and what she does is she, she takes fabrics, some African fabrics, and designs uh, really cool bags actually, um, and she sells it in in, in in Japan. And since we started supporting her two or three years ago, um, actually her sales has gone up like this, and and she's gotten pretty wide recognition. Um, like. In, in like I think she was in Jipangu, uh, like in a television show and, and things like that, and so. Um, but most of them, <coughs> actually, um, that we tend to support are people that want to provide jobs to Africa, not just masks, but just people that actually are in need to have a have a job, but they don't have a job basically. So. Uh, I wonder if the uh, entrepreneurs, African. Young entrepreneurs, maybe uh, some of people here are, are very interested in. 
who are partnering with Japanese entrepreneurs are also eligible for your funding? This is for, well, we just said, because, well, you know, for, you know, Japanese young people that don't go abroad, and that's the sort of the, the common sort of theme across Japan. Um, but we find that that's not really the case. There are people that are challenging, I mean, you know, trying to do businesses, making bread in Africa, wow, you know. Um, uh, and so we tend to actually support, but, but many of them have partners. Right, and so, and so for for Nakamoto San, she has a partner called Susan. <coughs> um, she was a single mother, couldn't couldn't raise her children w with work, but now um, with this work, um, she's able to send her kids to school, you know, which she couldn't before, and so so indirectly actually. We, we, I see. Yeah. I see. And uh, the, the last question to you uh, here is, the, uh, is we, we have many uh, stakeholders today, for the government and, uh, and for development and embassies based in Tokyo. And then I, I believe there are many Abe initiative students who are now conducting training in Japan. And also they are hosting companies also there. What are your expectations and what kind of uh, support that young ent entrepreneurs who, who are conducting in Africa. These guys? Yeah. Um, support. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, or, it, it, yeah. could, it could be financial, or but it could be for like, let's say, you know, like 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 uh, uh, Nakasan. I mean, he's got he's got nothing right now, <laughs> but but he want he want he has got he's got this vision to blend African fabric with with Kyoto sort of um, uh, techniques. And make it into a product, and say, and say, hey, you know, why, why don't we put it up in our shop? For instance, Nakamoto-san, she got her first break. The reason why she got her first break, she had designed this wonderful, nice bag. Um, um, she was in Africa. Her mother was actually in Shizuoka. <coughs> she took the bag. The mother took the bag to Isetan, which is a large department store. First floor anywhere, there's an information center, right? Uh, for information, she took the information center and said. My daughter made this. I want to sell this. Boom. <coughs> and the information center girl says, oh, okay, well, let, let me contact the buy purchasing department. Um, and, and one thing led to another, and, and Isatan gave her a chance to, to have a pop-up store. And so those are, those are the sort of the small sort of stories, <coughs> this, you know, and, and, and sort of connections and whatnot that, that's provided for her to make the next step, right? Yeah, our, our role is, is to uh, make sure that somebody like her going to the next step is recognized here in Japan so, so I, I can talk to you guys and talk to the press and any, any other sort of talk to the government. Um, that there are actually, you know, these you know, young people and in, in Japanese young people in Africa challenging um, and there are some success stories and, and we, sh we should be able to sort of um, um, how do you say kaksan in Japanese? But but share 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 the share the you know the 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 uh, experience. I think. Thank you very much. So we heard uh, these two uh, excellent uh, presenters uh, from Jetro and from uh, uh, Shibusawa Commons on the uh, actual you know the idea of the uh, J uh, Jetro. Uh, from the Japanese government side, uh, Minister of uh, Economy, Trade, and in, uh, Industry, they are working closely with Jetro. Uh, they want to have uh, Japanese entrepreneurs to uh, do more to get the reach to uh, Africa and uh, get the ground, find the good partners, and, and, and uh, be part of the supply chains and the market. And Shibusawa-san actually supporting uh, these young people who are very innovative and then also who are very patient to make their business uh, put on the track. And then Shibusawa-san very gently uh, watching them and providing support. So from now uh, the audience side, from the floor, uh, do you have any questions or comments or ideas to uh, to ask for these, you know, great uh, supporters? This is a precious opportunity in front of everybody in the public. If he, if they promise something, they have to deliver. 
Any questions? <laughs> okay, please. Okay, uh, thank you for the inspiring talk. Um, so I just joined like 10 minutes ago, so I think I missed something, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but um, so what I want to know is like, what are the uh, qualifications for like applying the initiative? Like, like the age and like, I don't know, like work experiences. Is there um, like those? Uh, to, 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 to me? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, we, 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 we just have, a, we have a, actually it's open actually. Um, so we have an application form that we accept once a year, um, usually from summer to um, about September. Um, and you fill it out, <laughs> and and, um, and 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 that doesn't mean that you automatically gets to be the candidate. But you, if you fill it out, and and if it looks like a you know a viable um, uh, proposition, um, we, we, you know we're startups ourselves. This this platform. So so, so actually, we weren't really choosy. Um, Maybe now we'll start being choosy though, since we did it three times. But, <laughs> but, but, but sometimes some people apply just for the heck of applying, and and uh, and I found maybe that from the from because one one sort of aspect that's important is for me for for the, uh, the candidates as well as people to support is, is p posting on this internet. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. One, one, you you have to be in Africa. You, you can't you can't say well I'm in Japan and then maybe in three years I'll go to Africa. Can you support me? No, that that that, that, that that's not work. That doesn't work. But but if you're already committed, and you you've you know jumped yourself into Africa and to try to start a business, that that, that that's a big message there, right? And so. Can I just add some more comments? I'm um, sorry. So uh, the reason why I ask, I ask this question is that so I was in Kenya this year, and I was I was doing an internship. Uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, you, um, you can call me Charles. And uh, so I was an intern at uh, Alpha Jiri. Do you know Alpha Jiri? It's, in, it's a agricultural supply chain um, startup in Kenya. And the uh, Oya Gaisha is borderless Japan. So it's in Japan. So I mean, just like, uh, I just wanted to know if there are like uh, qualifications, like, so how many years? Does, like, you have to have your own started. business. I mean, you uh, can't you can't be an employee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see. Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful presentation. I'm uh, Zuhavan. I'm from uh, Madagascar. My question is to the vice president of uh, JTRO. Actually, you explained about the kind of support you give to Japanese companies to invest in uh, Africa, but uh, my question will be the reverse. What kind of uh, opportunities is given to, uh, is arranged by JETRO for, uh, for example, for sta start or uh, young business leaders in Africa to, to access the Japanese market? Thank you. Promotion on the imp uh, our organization have a mission to the uh, strength and the uh, trade and the investment between the Japan and the rest of the world. So it means uh, export is not only our mission. So import is also our mission. So we have the several facility uh, try to the expand in the importation from the African countries. Uh, one uh, very visible example, uh, you will find some uh, uh, African uh, product kiosk in the uh, international airport, for example, the Kansai airport of the Narita airport. You will find this, uh, your country's Madagascar product is showing that uh, uh, shops for the Japanese customers. And also, the every ticket, we have the uh, some uh, exception uh, space to introduce the African product for the Japanese uh, officials. And also, the, uh, we uh, provided assistance to the uh, all African countries uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, put e their product on the big exception uh, opportunity, uh, for example, the food decks. 
uh, for the uh, Japanese uh, B2B business uh, dealings. So such kind of the activity is, uh, I think, uh, uh, your uh, purpose to the, uh, assist for the, uh, your export to Japanese market. Um, yes, maybe uh, to, uh, mom and next to mom, <laughs> and I go come to you, ambassador. Is okay? Okay, please. Um, thank you very much for the presentations. My name is Irene Nabanova from Uganda, and I'm currently working for Ashinaga the organization that is supporting uh, orphaned students worldwide uh, to provide them with educational support. Um, my impression, uh, and actually also uh, had my, uh, both my undergrad and, uh, univers uh, and uh, master's uh, uni uh, university education in Japan. So yeah, you might say that I've been Japanized a little bit. <laughs> So I know Japan as a country of uh, high technology, if you may agree with me. And uh, of course, probably this question goes to uh, both of our presenters. Uh, when I say this kind of uh, businesses, they are very good uh, business approaches because they, are, um, uh, they fit they probably the uh, qualities of the target population that they are uh, working with. But I also know and understand, probably can speak for the sake of my country, is that uh, we have many young people who are actually very educated and uh, they are very attracted to new technologies. So my, my concern is if Japan, of course, in most cases you need the start point, I guess, Probably that's why uh, Japanese young people are interested in taking uh, um, this level of uh, you know, business uh, partnership to Africa or Uganda. I would assume that it could be misrepresentation of Japan to the young people uh, in Africa or Uganda because uh, young people are attracted to technology and they are very much yearning to uh, do things uh, quicker you know, using this technology. And if Japan is using the same approach with the other many NGOs we've seen around the world, I think it's kind of a misrepresentation of Japan. So my question is, is this just testing the waters or when is the right timing that you want to introduce that technology to Africa because we need it? Thank you. Well, the right time is now. <laughs> right time is now. Um, are, are the um, large corporations willing to take that leap? Um, maybe not, because these large corporations kind of tend to think about, well, how much market is there? And, and they, they, they tend to think more logically rather than from, they, they, they think more cerebral rather than they're from their heart, basically, right? <coughs> um, and so, and, and as large corporations, they, they can't leapfrog, but, but what Africa is looking for is leapfrog, right? <coughs> um, so the timing is now, um, and, and that was the finding that actually that uh, at Keizai Do Yukai we found, we, we actually had this um, um, uh, really vast survey <coughs> of corporations doing activities in Africa. Um, and the message was clear that the timing is now. Um, but was there a commitment from all the corporations from the top management? Mm, probably not, it, it, it's sort of my take. Um, so actually, it's probably f um, actually the more of the, uh, the small startup ventures <coughs> that have the technology know-how that can go to Africa. You know, there's some people actually trying to make a bank, I think, <laughs> in Africa, cryptocurrency and things like that. Um, you know, so, um, so there, there, are, there are pockets of, pockets of um, these kind of innovations coming. Um, 
um, I think they just and th those kind of initiatives needs to have more attention from from the general public here and also in Japan and in Africa, and, and, and resources. Right, you need you need money, right, <coughs> and you need people, um, and you, you got the people, um, but but if you have the money, you need either have the investment or you need to have the sales, <coughs> um, one or the other, and so um, this, I think that, that's that's where we're at right now. Um, but I, under, I understand that, you know, Africa needs technology now and the younger people, you know, crave for it. And so, and, and if we're, as a, as a country, if we're slow to start on that, there's plenty of other countries with technology that can step in. And that, that's a shame. What do you think, Mr. Hino? You are quite right. <laughs> And our government provided that we call the ABE initiative. And uh, per year, almost 200 uh, younger generation was invited by the, our government uh, finance uh, to learn the Japanese to get a master degree and also as an on-the-job training is uh, uh, Japanese companies to learn the high technology. We have the very expected to have the summer uh, collaboration uh, uh, to yield this uh, uh, good uh, uh, relationship with the Japanese company and the African peoples to work for us. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Amancio Antonio. I'm from Mozambique. My question goes to any of you. So as we can see here, you are supporting a lot of young Japanese going to Africa starting business. And for, for example, in a, a, a clear example is the lady you mentioned that you know, she collects fabric from people they do the work and she sell abroad. How do you make sure that the things that some local people from Africa, from Uganda, produce and you sell you sold abroad in higher price those people get the fair price because what I see is this when I go to airport I see a shirt African shirt I ask the price it's really expensive compared to the money that I would used to buy in Mozambique but the people who produce who manufacture this thing they don't get that money and they remain poor and someone who just took it outside the country to that airport is getting a lot of money. How can we, or how do you make sure that those people get a fair price at the end of the day? Thank you. Um, wait, wait, the, the point that you point, the, it's not just an Africa problem. I was in Vietnam on Monday and I had to buy some gifts for my family and so I was, I was at the airport and I bought a chocolate, nuts, what else? Something like that, three, three items. I thought I had, I had bought up much more, but I thought I had plenty of money, but, but I didn't. <laughs> I, I couldn't convert the currency correctly. In, in other words, what I'm saying is at the airport in any country, <clears throat> they scam you basically, right? Because <laughs> you have no other choice to buy somewhere else, and you're in a hurry to get something. Um, so, so, so I think it's not just an Africa problem for one. Um, the, and sort of what the more the core of the problem is not just um, is how, how, how do you the, actually people that are making the product how do they get paid is, is your is your is your is your question um, that's a difficult question because it's 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 it, that's the, that's the way economy sort of works in a sense is is people that create the brand people that um, that distribute that brand tend to get tend to get a, f a fatter margin than actually people making the car. I mean, or I'm sorry, making the product. I even for Japanese <coughs> manufacturing companies, <coughs> if you think about it, people that are actually making the parts for the cars, they don't get paid that much. They don't get the much. Much, much, much of the the fat margin is that it's at the end of end product. People that can distribute the product. Um, so that, it, in a sense, it, it's sort of, it's um, it's sort of the. Um, rules of economics in a sense. But technology is changing that in a sense is that you get to cut out a lot of the middleman now these days. And so so in a sense maybe if 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 that product is fair trade <coughs> 
the consumer is willing to, to pay more, and if there's transparency <coughs> in that product um, to make sure there's no child labor, you know, people are getting paid fairly. Um, we, have the, we have the technology, in a sense, that be able to trace it. And so, so uh, the, past, the past rule is not, is not necessarily the future, right? Um, so in a sense, m I think you make a great point in the sense that mix, mixing with that, um, with the, uh, your, your um, um, point about technology is, is to increase transparency in the supply chain. <coughs> that, that's, that's how you, you know, get people that are actually making the product you know, get their fair share, I think, uh, of, of the price. Great, thank you very much. That, uh, uh, any, any point? Okay. Um, all right. We have t uh, tonight the African Diplomatic Communities, a ticket uh, group chair, ambassador from Cameroon, uh, His Excellency Pierre Zenge. Thank you very much for your frequent encouragement uh, to this uh, group. Um, as African ambassador working in Japan and you are uh, encouraging Japanese companies to go doing business in Africa, they also you are sending your uh, compatriots to Japan, young people, to uh, create a bridge between two, two parties. So what, what's your, uh, give us some good example that really people are uh, you know, uh, excited to follow you. And, and also, you, uh, whatever you, you, your remarks about this presentation. Thank you, Mr. Kondo. Uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Hirano and Shirusawa san for their uh, very informative presentations. In fact, uh, I have uh, three questions directed to Hirano san. Generally speaking, SMEs are key to development in any countries. And we really appreciate you know, the role played by uh, JETRO in that perspective. But my question, my first question is, Yerano san, what are the conditions or the requirement for JETRO to have an office in Africa? Because as you, you can easily understand, you know, uh, we don't have JETRO offices in all over Africa. And uh, if uh, I'm correct, Having an office, a JETRO office somewhere is key, is very important, not only to boost, you know, uh, development or business between this country and Japan, but also it could be a kind of uh, uh, whistle blowing, or blowing that uh, there is something going on here, there is opportunity, business opportunity in this country. So what are the requirements, you know, for you to open an office in Africa? This is my first question. Uh, the second question is, um, as you mentioned it, uh, we are heading to TICAT 7. And we really appreciate what uh, the SMEs, the presentation of SMEs during the ministerial, as a side, a very important side event. Now, taking into consideration the TICAT 7, do you have a specific proposal, you know, for ticket segment as far as JETRO is concerned? And the last question is regarding, you know, Abe Initiative former students. Uh, it happens that sometimes those students, after leaving Japan, with their knowledge, going back to their home countries, there is no business, or they can open a business. So would it be possible for those students to come back to JETRO and ask for a kind of assistance, you know, to open businesses in, uh, in their home country and therefore create jobs. That's, you know, the three question I have. As far as you know, the, what uh, my good friend Mr. Kondo has said, I think uh, we have very, a very important example, as far as Cameroon, my home country, is concerned, of uh, very... Uh, I would say aggressive as Japanese SMEs is TMT in Oita Prefecture, which uh, currently in Cameroon uh, producing, you know, bio toilets. This is very important not only for the environment, also for the people. 
So this is, and uh, a TMT was present, you know, during the ministerial, and I really appreciate, you know, was uh, we, the government of Cameroon is appreciating, you know, what TMT is doing uh, in Cameroon right now. This is a kind of successful story, you know, I can uh, cite. And uh, to conclude, I think we need, you know, S Japanese SMEs in Africa in the context of a partnership between S Japanese SMEs and African SMEs. I think this kind of partnership not only would create job, but would also uh, bring transfer of te uh, technology. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, let me answer your question for the other term. And uh, for the last question, uh, Abe Initiative. And currently, Abe Initiative handled by the JICA, and also our JETRO is uh, pulling a cooperation to select the people of the each country. But uh, now, uh, just before the ticket seven, our JETRO uh, scrutinized to the result of the Abe Initiative. From that point of view, I already touched it. Uh, I have the idea uh, putting the unified uh, uh, support platform uh, among uh, the JICA, uh, JETRO, and UNDP uh, to facilitate and uh, more uh, efficient uh, utilizing to the ABE initiative. And uh, next for the next year, our JETRO uh, put in the more emphasis and the more, more strengthened activity uh, to bridging to the people or uh, non-Japanese who have the wish to work for the Japanese company and the Japanese company who have the wish doing the business overseas. And for that purpose, uh, we already have the MOU is uh, Japanese university and also uh, the university in the outside of the Japan. And uh, uh, I expected uh, I can, we can uh, utilize such sort of uh, ABE initiative too to include in such sort of the recruitment system uh, for uh, African people who have the uh, good uh, trainings and also the big wish to work in for us uh, to the we can supply to the bridging uh, facilitating to the face-to-face uh, uh, -face, uh, talking with the Japanese employers and the uh, young people. Uh, so such sort of the uh, setups, I believe, is the other initiative function more efficiently. And uh, uh, you were concerned to the, after the training in Japan, but uh, they have the, uh, sometimes it's very difficult for them to find a good business uh, uh, employment opportunity. And, but uh, on the other hand, uh, the many Japanese uh, companies, uh, they complain about this, uh, we can lack of the uh, good talent to assist this African business. Maybe we can find this a good solution to the matching for them. That is my answer to the, your last question. And the second question, uh, for the TCAT 7, uh, several months ago, uh, our governmental agent and also the uh, many ministers uh, gathering uh, under the Mr. Foreign Affair to the uh, preparatory meeting, working meet meeting for the ticket uh, seven, under the chair by the uh, for our foreign minister, Mr. Uh, Kono. At that uh, table, I uh, uh, advised what I uh, 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 proposed. Uh, next ticket is a uh, uh, ticket which held in uh, Japan five years later. So that this should be this a good opportunity uh, to introduce uh, the Japanese SMEs, not only the, this region, to invite is, uh, as a part of the region a little bit far from the Tokyo, but uh, they can easily come to the Yokohama to meet to the African officials of each country. So the introducing, introducing it in SMEs, I, sh I think, is a must come as a one of the focus for the ticket seven. But uh, still, ticket seven, the uh, detailed composition is under the discussion. So the, I cannot uh, promise, but uh, our general have the big wish to in ticket seven must a good opportunity. 
you uh, provide this information about the Japanese SMEs as their wish, as their intention, and also their technology. And the final question is the most difficult question to answer. <laughs> uh, actually, the number of the uh, general office, not only the African continent, uh, all over the world, now there's a 75. And uh, uh, how to increase so the uh, number of the, our office is uh, finally the problem of the finance. Because uh, our government is suffer is uh, uh, to get this uh, enough finance. And the uh, general have the uh, very variety of the missions to revitalize the Japanese economy. And Africa is also part of that, but uh, we don't have the enough uh, finance from the government to manage to the um, to increase to the our office in overseas. But uh, on the other hand, we have the uh, request from the our top is uh, Mr. Abe uh, to increase the number of the African office uh, uh, try to cross to the double side so we uh, managed to uh, to increase and and open to the new office but uh, but Please give us a time <laughs> to ask the uh, as a ministry who have the responsibility to provide the finance, and uh, uh, and also uh, in recent year we uh, rapidly increase in the domestic office because uh, revitalize the Japanese economy. It means it's not in the, not only exclusively to the Tokyo area, as every part of the Japan. And uh, uh, so the f first priority come to the domestic office. Uh, so the, uh, we must uh, uh, struggle again uh, to the, uh, uh, new, open the new office in the African continent. Very difficult to answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, Hiram, I think uh, the UNDP can be of help in that sense because <laughs> uh, our administrator, Akim Steiner, uh, visited Jap just visited Japan, and he just left uh, yesterday. Uh, he was received very kindly by uh, Minister Seko of uh, METI. And then uh, in this short discussion, but they uh, very intensively discussed about the uh, ticket. And then opportunities for Japanese uh, business people and also the uh, African uh, local market to be should be connected together and then uh, UNDP uh, is very much counted on and uh, that minister said and my administrator said UNDP promise to help Jetro <laughs> and then uh, uh, in the coming uh, ticket session we're going to do the uh, side event together and then encourage the SMEs and young people to make a, a, a bring the good ideas and we're going to organize the pitch context uh, uh, a competition. And then and if a good one that uh, Shibusawa-san will find, uh, uh, he's going to maybe for sure <laughs> funding that business. And then in that, in that uh, discussion, uh, Minister Seko, uh, clearly mentioned that the, the uh, Japanese METI uh, focus on the energy sector, and uh, for example, the, uh, the hydro, uh, hydrogen energy, uh, battery things, and all these uh, off-grid uh, energy supply. Because en uh, the power supply, the elect electri elect electrification is essential for betterment of life for the people. That, that was the point. Uh, we are very encouraged. Uh, so that uh, Hirano-san, your uh, <coughs> briefing to your minister was very <laughs> successful. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> we have also here Ambassador Kia, uh, who uh, tonight as well uh, came to encourage us. Uh, Kia-san, uh, these days, you know, thanks to this, you know, uh, agile discussion among the business people, the next ticket seven uh, session will feature somehow the business to business uh, dialogue platform. Uh, so, do you have any uh, concrete plan or any the uh, image or uh, the plot on that? Yes, uh, it's uh, definitely it's under incubation, um, but. Uh, Meti and uh, Mofa for Ministry uh, and uh, Jaika and Jetra and others are now working together to work out a plan uh, to make a TCAD, uh, business and innovation TCAD. And TCAD need also needs to be, needs, needs innovation itself. So the, um, the, we see many innovations uh, in Africa and many conference bilateral say, uh, as far as like, as for international organization, UNDP, WFP, uh, UNICEF, they are talking about the innovation to achieve the SDGs in African country as well. But I think TICAC could be a forerunner of innovation for big companies, SMEs, and startups, and uh, entrepreneurs. I think because it's a, it's a real platform for all the uh, partners. So TICAC is uh, uh, Olympics or the Davos Conference for African Development. And uh, so connectivity and uh, platform, that is a, a key word, key concept of TCAT. And uh, um, with uh, the, the, the Jetro's uh, really um, um, uh, uh, know-how and the Shibusa san's uh, really um, eye-opening initiative with concrete results, that would make a very firm foundation for uh, further step forward, deep uh, for the upcoming teachers. And we've got all the ideas, and uh, we've got all the Abe Initiative students and ambassador and uh, all the partners, I think, and with this uh, good uh, UNDP uh, AfriConverse platform. So we still have a uh, ten, uh, nine, nine months ago. We still a bit, have a bit more time, uh, another month to go before next year. So I hope that uh, we, we work hard for a month and then start the new year next year. Thank you, Ambassador. Very encouraging. So having heard all these gentlemen, uh, including mine, that just a quick report on the administrator's visit, uh, now your turn the, uh, uh, from the floor to say a few words. Anyone? What question? Uh, hi, I'm Harsh from Tamagami uh, Academy High School. Uh, with many countries investing in Africa, especially China and the United States, working very hard to get uh, open up new markets in Africa, how do Japanese companies, or how should Japanese companies, uh, specialize in their businesses in Africa to maximize not only profits, but also I would believe it's important for the Japanese government to expand Japanese influence in Africa? Sorry, this is a question to Mr. Hirano. If you could answer this, we'd be very thankful. Uh, if we're talking about this uh, uh, daily basis of activity in as a Jetro, uh, we don't have the, our own target uh, because uh, uh, we are depend on the request come from the private sector. So the, some company want this uh, uh, some region or the uh, some. Uh, uh, targeted companies in Africa, uh, we are providing information and uh, bridging service to between them. Uh, but uh, a general observation, uh, Japanese company uh, used to have the tendency to concentrate to the English-speaking area. So that is uh, one of the barrier for the expansion of the Japanese business activity. So the, uh, in these uh, several years, uh, we uh, put in the, some um, effort uh, to the um, collaboration ship, build up collaboration ship with the French. We have the uh, 
uh, a counterpart in French is a business French, uh, so the France general I got. Uh, we have already have the MOU with them, and uh, uh, we expected that some uh, concrete result will come until the TCAT 7. So now, beside of the Nissan problem, <laughs> we uh, enjoy this uh, good uh, uh, relationship uh, between the Japan and the French, and the uh, French companies uh, have the strong wish to collaborate with us in the uh, West African region, especially the Francophone area. Is that right to you? Or the, some other point, for example, the industrial sectors? In, in your opinion, as a person who's working in this sector, what should Japanese companies try? Uh, of course, you said working in Francophone areas, not only in English-speaking areas, but what, what should they try to do to expand their well, business opportunities? And I don't know how much you uh, as an individual are connected with the Japanese government, but how should the Japanese government use these companies to increase its influence in Africa, to maximize not only current opportunities, but later opportunities, especially with competition from countries, especially like China. <laughs> uh, that is a job for the Mr. Paul in the And that question will be the going to the ambassador Kia. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, in nowadays, uh, you may know that our Prime Minister uh, started a new phase of the discussion with China. And now the Japan and China uh, already agree to the think about the uh, third country's uh, collaboration. Now the target in Thailand, but also the Africa, I think, is included in the target. So uh, we don't have the intention to compete with them and conflict with them. Uh, just we want to the coexistence peacefully with China. So I highly hope the Chinese people understand well that point, our wish. And uh, we have, the, uh, we employed several measures uh, to promote trade and investment as uh, a region like African continent, which Japanese company has uh, very less little experience. And currently speaking, or historically speaking, Japanese private sector activity more concentrated in the Asian region and U United States. So the, our presence is uh, let to be very weak in the Europe and African continent. So we, we have the uh, very uh, priority uh, prioritize to the uh, promotion African continent and Europe. Uh, so the, uh, because we don't have the special intention, of course is that we don't have the political intention, we just have the, it must, it may be the very natural thing, our presence in Africa has come close to the, at least the 2% of the total Japanese activity in the overseas, because the uh, uh, GDP share of the Africa is uh, almost 2% in the globally. But uh, in our stage, it's uh, just 1% or less than 1% in trade ship and investment. So the, I personally think is the Japanese presence can become close to the double size compared to the current stage. So the every sectors and the every regions will be target. And uh, in these entries, is the Japanese company's activity is a more uh, accelerated to the M&A. It's the African companies or the other countries, the companies who have the African business. And that is a big step for the Japanese company to see more energetically to the doing something in the African continent. So we, at Jetro, is uh, when we provide uh, uh, support that sort of the intentions. Thank you very much, uh, Hirano-san. Um, we have 
little bit per, uh, different perspective from the university, which you know uh, incubate actually the young people and uh, engage and encourage them to go finding business, creating a business. And that will give another opportunity for university to work together with the private sector and then open the uh, wider contribution to the development. We have tonight the uh, representative of uh, Tokyo University uh, president office that our Ahimstein administrator just visited and then signed MOU for uh, educational collaboration. Mr. Kimura, thank you very much for your visit. And if you can uh, give us some uh, idea from the university side on this discussion. Thank you very much, Mr. Kondo. Well, the, uh, I wanted to ask you questions to Hirano-san, to Shibusao-san. Uh, uh, if you can give us a piece of, piece of advice to the University of Tokyo, what we, are, we can do in the African continent, because uh, you know, the, we have many, many uh, fields of uh, studies and uh, researches, but the, uh, what do you think about the, uh, the, the strengths of the Japanese universities to be applied to the African continent uh, through the collaboration between uh, universities and business? So uh, just a few examples will be okay, such as the uh, establishing the laboratories in a certain country uh, or to send the African students to the university in which particular field of uh, study. So just a piece of advice to give you so that I can work in the university. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Yes. Uh, Every uh, possible activity you mentioned is uh, one of the, uh, uh, my recommendations, but uh, basically I want to say this one recommendation uh, is uh, in the case of the academic uh, relationship between the Japan and the African country, uh, we have the, uh, some liaison um, round table uh, in the field of uh, natural science. Maybe the Tsukuba University is a coordinator. But uh, social science or the liberal arts, we don't have. So the, I highly hope this uh, University of Tokyo uh, can mm, provide an effort to the, uh, persuade other universities to participate. It's a sort of the initiative. And uh, uh, also myself, uh, used to be belonging to the academic circle. So that I'm willing to the, uh, collaborate as sort of the effort if you uh, go and start uh, to this pick up to the several Africa uh, universities so that we can start, initiate this a sort of uh, uni university basis is uh, uh, very per periodical uh, uh, forums over the organ to exchange opinion. So the, the sort of the uh, collaboration ship uh, among the staffs uh, make it more easy to exchange a student or the more high advanced uh, science uh, intercourse uh, between Japan and the African country. From the investor perspective? Um, well, if you think about it, it, the University of Tokyo attracts the best and brightest <coughs> of young people here in Japan. Um, and frankly, most of them probably don't know about anything about Africa, right? <clears throat> and so, um, I don't know, but maybe, do you have an exchange program with African universities, for instance? You know, and then, and for, and the, the people that are interested in development will probably go, but in Hōgakubu, you know, uh, School of Law, that's where the b brightest go. <clears throat> It, the, the, if you had some maybe incentive for them to go to Africa for like six months or something, I mean, these people are going to end up working for the government. They're going to end up working for the large corporations. Um, but if they if they have the experience to you know to live and to breathe in that on the African continent, um, you know that'll put a different spin on most people, <coughs> their, their their peers or, or their, their senpai that's never been to Africa. So. Um, 
for the University of Tokyo to get involved in Africa, for me, is, is you send your people to Africa. I mean, that's probably the most impact you'll have, not in the near term, perhaps, uh, but in the long term, I think that'll have a great impact. Thank you very much. Um, maybe you want to take the last question from the floor? Anybody? Oh, you have three. <laughs> okay. It goes through one. Starting with one, two, three. Okay. Um, my name is Umar Cello. I'm from Senegal. And I'm working now uh, at Fujitsu, an IT company. So um, I, I had a very good surprise uh, to see, uh, to, to hear today about this initiative and to see uh, these new startups, uh, helping these uh, new startups to, 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 to expand and to do business in Africa. And um, so on, on the other side, um, so uh, I think there is also uh, many uh, young people from Africa uh, that graduated from university here in Japan and working as well. And um, my question is, uh, do you have any uh, future plans to uh, integrate these uh, uh, young people, qualified people working in, 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 uh, um, in companies here, um, to, to integrate them in, in your plan to, to help SMEs companies um, to, to expand to Africa? That is my question. Um, to, to Jetro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I already touched on the issue which now you mentioned to the answer to the ambassador. Uh, we are a public organization, so the we cannot touch is a sort of the business to the recruitment or the introducing the personnel, but. Uh, uh, we have the plan to set up to some uh, occasion to the uh, meeting with the Japanese SMEs and the overseas student uh, staying in Japan. So we already initiated and uh, we already have to set up uh, occasion in Tokyo, Osaka, Sendai, and uh, we uh, shared the sort of the idea is uh, some uh, representative Japanese universities, uh, including the University of Tokyo. So we are going to do a sort of the, uh, provide a facility to you uh, in, in, in line with such now I explain. Hello, hi, my name is Buki. Um, I was born in Nigeria, but I live here in Tokyo now. Um, I'm more interested in the creative sector. And my, my question, well, first I want to thank, uh, sorry if I get your name wrong, Shigusawa-san. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I want to thank Ken for um, you know, mentioning that there really isn't a good um, representation or awareness of Africa in Japan. Um, and specifically in the creative sector. And from the conversation we've had today, most of it has been infrastructure, IT, or most investment from Japan to Africa has been the agri agriculture sector. Um, so kind of going back to the beginning of the conversation in regards to this question and the qualification for the African side um, creators, for example, trying to come to Japan, what are the qualifications for that? Because a lot of them are probably not companies. Um, they're individual entrepreneurs trying to come into the market, into the Japan market, and don't fall under the, the well, I guess the well-known sector, like agriculture, IT, or infrastructure. Some of them are individual designers, for example, or artisans. So back again, what is the qualification? And would those people, would those group fall under um, what uh, Jetro for example, would look at as a <laughs> good <laughs> as a good, uh, um, I guess, investment or to help come into the Japan market, if that makes sense. It's also to you too, as an investor, as an investor, because at the end of the day, it is an investment into the Japan market. Um, as an investor, uh, 
When you say investor, there's different classes of investors. If you're talking about institutional investors, um, for in institutional investors to get involved in the creative sector, and I'm just not, just not talking about Africa, but creative sector um, design, and, and it, it's really hard for institutional investors to get into that. One, because there's not enough scale, because they need to put in like millions and millions and billions of dollars. Um, and so it, the scale doesn't match. And frankly, they don't have the expertise or the knowledge. <clears throat> um, so, so in the design or the creative sector, I think you'll have to rely more on on individual investors, um, probably in the same field, <clears throat> in the creative sector that's been successful. Um, and and because they're in the creative sector, and maybe, maybe if they've accumulated the wealth, um, and if they see something interesting, of so Africa content in w what they're doing, and they can kind of see a mix or something like that, and then that might spark some interest. But um, but for, for, for a bank or an insurance company or a large fund to go into the creative sector, um, it's not just Africa, but for any sector, it's, it's, it's probably difficult. So you need to find the right, actually, person. And you're going to ask, where are you going to find that right person? You've got to look hard. <laughs> you have to look hard. <laughs> Well, it used to be we work for the creative sectors for Japan, and uh, you may have heard about this uh, Cool Japan, and Cool Japan is uh, not necessarily successful, and uh, that's uh, managed by the other organization, but uh, used to be the Jetro is also working for that. Um, but now, is uh, exclusively for the promotion to the Japanese agriculture sector and uh, uh, agriculture product exportation. Uh, currently, I can say almost nothing. So the, we have the big mission to, to make a double such as size. Uh, so we are uh, employed to the new initiative, to the uh, new concept of the Japanese uh, cuisine employ, uh, working with is a creative, creators in Japan. Uh, and uh, not directly the creative sectors, uh, we, we initiative, regarding to the Africa activity, we uh, uh, already start to the, uh, work in, uh, in the field of the startups in Africa. Uh, but uh, we are organization to promote this uh, Japanese business activity, so the uh, something support for the African entrepreneur is the uh, work by the JICA. Uh, but uh, we uh, introduce the African startup and the African the new innovative uh, business activity to the Japanese uh, capital finances, venture capital. So such sort of activity we experienced almost one year, over the one year. Uh, based in the Kenya or the Rwanda or the Uganda, the East African region we started. Maybe the, we expanded the South Africa or the Nigeria. But I think this, I'm afraid, is that my activity is not directly to you, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, but we, we're doing that, that like that. Okay, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for the presentation, uh, and uh, let me thank the Cameroonian ambassador for representing uh, Africa all the time. Thank you, sir. Uh, my question, uh, because the second uh, speaker do mention that uh, JETRO, they are not only uh, focusing uh, of uh, export, but they also focus uh, on import. And uh, from an uh, economic uh, perspective, when we are discussing about trade, we are basically uh, talking about import uh, and export. So, uh, but uh, looking at the, the situation where we are, Africans, they are basically importing uh, raw materials, and the Japan is exporting the, the Finnish uh, goods. And uh, when you look at the term of trade, uh, looking at the price of our uh, commodities uh, is putting our uh, African countries at uh, uh, receiving an uh, end. So uh, my question is that uh, what uh, Japanese uh, or JETRO is doing uh, 
in order to assist uh, African country in a uh, Balu addition uh, in the raw material they have so that it will help them uh, achieve uh, a better uh, term of trade. And uh, second question, uh, because uh, exporting uh, agricultural uh, raw materials, there are so many rules, so many certification, uh, country certification and specification, uh, and which in most cases made the uh, African uh, export to other countries like uh, Japan very, very uh, difficult. So what JETRO is doing uh, in order to reduce the complexity of uh, rules or specification and certification of uh, African uh, raw materials uh, that will come to Japan if there are no much uh, complexity and in rules? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, my name is uh, Bawale Aliu Ali. I'm from Nigeria, and uh, I'm IB initiated by beneficiary. Thank you. After that, uh, he's also uh, detached from the uh, Ministry of Planning, right? Yeah, uh, that's right. Thank you. Yes, uh, JETO is uh, not organization assist. Uh, to the other country's uh, uh, economy. Uh, that is, uh, uh, should be done by the ODA, Development Assistance. That is the work by the JICA. Uh, we are organization is, uh, uh, let me repeat, to the promote, to trade and investment. So the uh, private sector uh, can decide to the which, set, which site is the destination for the investment. Though I and already said is uh, uh, we don't have the, our own target. The target will provide the private sector. That is a market economy. We are not China. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and also important thing is uh, currently we import almost very few raw material from Africa. Uh, we don't import as uh, uh, import, but very few of the oil and natural gas, and the very few is uh, 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 mineral oil. So that is uh, one of the reason our trade ship is decreasing, and our export to Africa also decreasing. So. Uh, I feel it's a bit serious. We, we must uh, expand to the uh, trade ship between the Japan and Africa. Uh, so the only way, we must find the opportunity for the private sector, not only the Japan, is also the African side, to the business opportunity beside to the natural resources. So very concrete example, uh, we are pick up, when I'm working in Africa, uh, we are pick up to the several product which is a very good potential and a good uh, quality uh, to uh, provide this uh, advice and introduce, this, uh, for example, sometimes the Japanese designer or the uh, Japanese uh, technocrat to, 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 in to uh, improve to the uh, have the uh, uh, ability to penetrate to the Japanese market. We are well understand that the Japanese market is a very difficult place for the foreigner and the foreign uh, companies to get the market share. And also, the, uh, you may know this, Abe administration now uh, put in a very uh, big effort to the, uh, scale down this uh, regulatory barrier and try to the very, uh, as, as much as open to the open market for the foreign uh, businessman to the Japanese, our own market. So that is a, a reason we have the big uh, mission to the exp, uh, exp, expand to the double side is uh, investment come to the Japan from the outside. Uh, 
so this is uh, uh, now the very keen task for the Japanese economy to revitalize our economic potential. That is not only good, and uh, that is also the human being. Uh, I already touched on that issue. Uh, our government has a strong wish to the, uh, work with a more big number of the foreign, foreigners for the uh, Japanese companies. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I uh, experienced uh, several times uh, to, uh, to when I hear to the request uh, such like you, uh, so the, uh, I uh, respond to such a question. Uh, okay, so the, which product now you have? Uh, so the candidate to the, come to the Japanese market. So the many answer is uh, now we don't have the uh, uh, concrete uh, product uh, which can export to the Japanese market. Uh, that kind of the selection or the industrial support is uh, definitely the task for the each African government. So the, our work is uh, always uh, based on the collaboration is uh, Japan and uh, Africa. So if the uh, African uh, some African company uh, uh, put in the request to the uh, uh, some good candidate or the list of the product. Uh, who have the uh, 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 potential, they think, to come to the, our market, uh, JETO can work with them uh, to the open such of the, uh, exclusively such of the uh, place of the market. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for great uh, answers and then very enlightening remarks on that. The final words, at the, the last day, of the Ticket 7 conference next year in Yokohama. You are coming out from the conference hall with what in your hand? <laughs> Just expectation, please. Friendship. Thank you very much. And Shibusawa-san. Money? <laughs> no, 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 no. I thought you were saying. <laughs> um, one, one last, it, there was some talk about sort of government getting involved in the business and whatnot, and, and, and Hiron-san was doing his best to sort of dodge, dodge the question, I think. But, but if you think about it, in the end, it's the business that actually has to create the value. And, it, and the government role of the government is not to force business, the Japanese companies to go do business in Africa, but, but for people that want to do business in Africa, to support. Um, one, one thing that I, I um, th a lot of the argument I hear about large corporations not getting involved in Africa is, is the fact that Africa as a large con as a continent has lots of people, big market, but if you look at individual countries, it's rather still very small. And so if you have to go through all the regulations to start a business in each country, it, 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 there's no scale of merit, uh, you know, the scale doesn't really work. So I'm sure there's a lot of discussions going on in the subject, but, you know, you have the regional economic uh, zone, right? And so, so if for, for, for not entire Africa, but for, for a regional economic zone, if there's a common law to, to have, you know, regulations about starting a business, acquiring land, hiring people, um, and, and et cetera, et cetera, um, then, then it becomes a bigger market <clears throat> for, for the Japanese corporations to enter into that market, I think. So, so that's maybe one of the, um, hopefully, one of the, the topics for discussions at TCAD 7, and we'll have that in our hand when we come out. How's that? Thank you very much. So thank you, uh, Hiranu-san, Shibusa-san, for your great uh, contribution and uh, enlightening us with the business towards the TCAD, what young people and then uh, entrepreneurs should have in mind. Uh, we're going to give a big clap to two gentlemen. Thank you very much.